If you've been following the Road to the PGA Series, you know Thomas has been putting in a lot of work this offseason. Well, today we're at the Campbell Residence to show you the golf barn, where he's been putting in a lot of that work this offseason. Welcome to the golf barn. Come on in. Hey golfers and welcome to another edition of Road to the PGA Championship with Thomas Campbell. Uh, I'm Drew Mahold here with the man Thomas Campbell and today you know we're showcasing a little bit of a kind of a, a surprise for you here. Uh, you know Thomas has been doing a lot of work throughout the off season here in the winter months in Minnesota. You can't play outside so um, of course he had to do a lot of that work inside and we're kind of showing you where a lot of that work's being done. Uh, so Thomas this is your golf bar. Yes, so uh, it's finally completed. There's still some work to, to be done. There's always going to be little, oh, yeah. little bit, bit, bits and pieces, but finally able to hit shots in my own golf barn in my own backyard. Yeah, I yeah. bet that's very convenient, especially for where we live. Uh, this is, I think today it's what, 10 degrees uh, at the very end of January here. So, and that's just a run of the mill day here in Minnesota. So no golf for outside for five, six months almost. So you got to come in here uh, and I guess to even get started here, because I know a lot of golfers out there are trying to figure out a way to make something like this a reality for themselves, whether it's maybe it's just in the garage or maybe it is a whole different building. But how did you, you know, come to the idea to start this, create your own golf barn? And um, let's kind of walk through that process here. Yeah. So my wife and I, we moved to Savage here in June 2020 kind of right during the, the pandemic, mm -hmm. selling our house. It was so much fun. But, <laughs> uh, but so we, we bought the property. There was this old barn on the property. It was really cool. I, I, I liked it. It was sweet. Ideally, I wanted to redo the barn. Mm -hmm. I wanted to take the ceiling up a little bit and so I could swing driver. Kind of envision having a nice open spot with 12 feet ceiling height. Um, but, you know, so I did, did some research. I actually talked to a couple of his historical societies, Dan Patch Historical Society, Found out a little bit more and actually came out and told me the story about the whole history around this area and the barn. And it was one of kind of the oldest buildings actually in Savage. Oh, wow. um, but there was no history you know, of it actually records telling me I couldn't do anything to it. Sure. Um, so then I talked to the city of Savage and I say, hey, I want to I wanna redo this. And I had, they came out and took, took some interest and in kind of very, very helpful. But at the end of the day, building code, like once you start modifying stuff, the building's already old. It's built in 1900. It's you. You need to. Yeah. It's not. You're putting a band-aid that's maybe not going to last very long. So you eventually, I mean, tore that down essentially and just rebuilt. The yeah. Thing. So your initial plan maybe was to kind of you know retool the, the the old barn, but then you kind of decided against that. Yeah. I mean, when I moved in, my initial plan was the barn's cool. Yeah. Maybe it's a project down the future. But then it was like several several months later. I'm like, yeah, let's let's start and at least get get some ideas and see if I can do anything with this and mm -hmm. maybe I'll pick golf shots out here. Um, you know, it, it just came to the time where I, I just found out that it, I needed to take the framing down. Yeah. I was able to keep the existing walls. So the, the foundation and the, and the concrete floor, I was able to keep. Um, I had to do some work to keep it and that was gonna be part of actually rebuilding, uh, I guess redoing the old building was this main wall here on, on the left side had some bowling going on. Um, so I actually put some, God, I didn't do it, but I had a company come out and put helical wall anchors in. So it kind of dug into the ground. So it's okay. never going to move right. ever again. It's going to be no shifting. Um, and then they put like a water vapor barrier, drain tile on the side. So it's going to be no leaking and also a sump pump system in. Then from there, I, I actually reached out to a few people and reclaimed lumber is actually a thing. Uh, it was more okay. of a thing a couple couple years ago. It was it was bigger then, mm -hmm. but I actually found a guy that wanted to build a horse barn in Shakopee. Okay. So he actually came out here for several weekends, him and a couple of friends, and they paid me for the wood to and they took it down as well. So I didn't do any of that stuff. Wow. So that was we took it down to the basically the walls. Yeah. Um, it looked like a big kind of open space, and then I reached out to few builders. During the pandemic, it was so hard to find builders. I started sure. thinking about doing this 
uh, I guess it was kind of October. I really didn't start building in 2021 until about July. That was when the actual building of the structure came yeah, to fruition. Correct. And you know, working with the city of Savage, we needed to make sure this, so I'm grandfathered in on the location. It's actually on my front yard. Any building can actually be on your front yard that you're building, it's supposed to be in the backyard. But because the building was already here, okay. I was grandfathered in. But it just couldn't be any larger than the existing building. So it actually had to be in the exact same location as well. Oh, okay. So I had a lot of restrictions in that. Sure. So I couldn't go wider. So unfortunately, I'm only got 12 and a half feet wide here. Uh, couldn't go taller. Luckily, the building was already really tall. Um, and but yeah, it was July 2021 is when we started kind of planning, getting, and then I think it might have been actually August. Luckily, at the time, the price of lumber started to drop. Because when I started planning this, I was, it was really going up, up, then came down, yeah. really, really, really up, up, up. And right when I was able to get the lumber, the price really dropped. And that's kind of the, one of the reasons why I was getting holding off, holding off. I'm just like, I just can't afford this. Yeah. New construction is very expensive. Right. Yeah. And so, and speaking of you know, the affording thing, I think you, know, you probably are approaching this as a big investment into your game. Right. As a professional yeah. player, you, know, you obviously have big goals. You're talking about you know, the PGA Championship, of course, talking about qualifying US Open. And even further than that uh, as well in your game. So I imagine, you know, there's probably a hefty price tag on all of this and, and all the different features you've added. But that has to be for you just an investment in your game because you know the way that you can play. Yeah, exactly what it is. It's an investment in my own game. Um, unfortunately, it's hard to find places with my, my busy schedule to be able to go practice and, and mm -hmm. stuff. And, you know, I can't really go on it any earlier to work at second swing and, and go hit the base for a couple of hours right. at six, five in the morning, especially <laughs> when I got a, a little one and right, you know, I got right. to drop her off at daycare. So I was like, you know, it's just nice to have my own spot. Yes, you know, cost some money. It was an investment, but I consider it an investment in my own game. Mm -hmm. I've you know, performed pretty well. I can pay it off pretty quickly. Sure. Yeah. Well, let's talk about what's all in here now. So, you know, we're standing on putting green. Uh, so this is the same, if I'm not mistaken, the same turf or I guess carpet that we use in Second Swing stores now. So, uh, and talk about you know installing the the whole locations. You got nice cool masters flags as yep. well. So talk about installing this part of the facility here. Yeah. So the turf, the 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 putting area, the hitting area, and also with the ball kind of lands. Uh, I was talking to a guy that helps out at, at all the stores with regards to um, turf. I went through Turf Factory Direct. Um, so this is kind of the putt putt, the okay. exact same turf as what's on the putting green at Minnetonka store. Um, so that was nice that I got some help there. Uh, it was just so much, so much more cost effective to, to buy it in mm -hmm. bulk and have it delivered as opposed to have some pay someone to come out and do it. Right. Um, so I did all the finishing once the building was was up and finished with finished walls. Okay. So I put all the all the turf down. Actually, I had Danny. Helped me a little bit sure. with the turf, helped me cutting some turf, which was really, really, really great. Um, the, the holes, that was the, that was the fun part, because when, when it comes to trying to find hole bits, drill bits, they either come in four or five inches. <laughs> well, the golf hole is four and a quarter inches. So I ended up going with the five. It was, it was fun trying to get through the concrete, because actually okay. it, was a, it was a slab, but there was also another old slab under there. <laughs> so we're wondering, why can't we go any further? Um, but uh, so that was that was a fun couple of evenings of trying to drill some holes. But it was a five-inch bit I had to use. I grabbed I just grabbed some clay, white clay, and kind of just got the clay and smoothed it out and hardened and put a sure. put a hole in there. And it looks like it, a normal hole, which is right. Which no, it does. Yeah. They look great, and you can definitely you know work on your putting. And that's ultimately what right. you're trying to get. You know, you're trying to work on your putting. You can definitely do that in here. So yep. um, then moving on. So you know now we're kind of talking about launch monitors here. So you yep. have a launch monitor installed, you know, looks like you went with Foresight here. Yep. Uh, talk to me about that decision to install Foresight uh, as your choice of launch monitor. Yeah, so it's, I went with a Foresight GC3. Uh, I still didn't know what I was gonna do until September, October of last year okay. uh, on launch monitor because, you know, I invested so much on this other stuff. And I'm like, well, there's not much left in the budget. Right. So the GC3 was more of a, a budget option. Um, I was contemplating going with GC2 units, refurbished units, trying to go, go that route. Um, but in the end, I, this just happened to come out kind of right around that, that same time. So GC3 is $7,000. Uh, 
I think eventually yeah. I'll probably upgrade once I stop paying most of this off and I have, have money to pay. I might end up going with either TrackMan or a GC Quad. Okay. Uh, just so I can get a little more data points. But this really does have a lot of data points. Yeah. The only thing it's missing is face angle, uh, dynamic loft, dynamic lie, really. So, yeah. I mean, it does everything else. It does my club path uh, for $7,000 camera-based system in this in this space here. I don't have to worry mm -hmm. about lighting at all like that too. So it, it works perfect, it's great. Yeah, yeah. and you can, you know, you you were showing me a little bit earlier, you can, you know, watch your swing too. We got cameras set up where you can, you know, hit a shot and shows your swing back and you were yep. showing me all the different pointers you use to kind of look at your own swing, see what any tweaks you need to make. And then the other cool thing too for me is someone who, you know, I, I'll find myself in the winter going to a golf simulator place and just hanging out for the day and watching some games or, yeah, Two TVs in here too, and stuff. Right. So yeah. uh, that's kind of that that extra piece too. If you know you can come here and work in your game in a serious manner, of course, but then also you can hang out, have maybe have some people over, play some golf, and just relax in the winter when you, know, you really can't do that outside. Yeah, I could have friends over. They can kind of sit and watch watch TV. My wife can come hang out with the, the little one yeah. and have her crawling around and watch some TV there too. But um, when I'm practicing on my own, honestly, I don't turn the TVs on. I don't want to be distracted. So that doesn't surprise me about yeah. you. <laughs> no. Yeah, so I'll come out here for, you know, I, I usually, once my daughter goes to, to bed, that's when I'll sneak out here and probably put in some, some time in the, in the evening. Okay. Because um, that's really the only time that I, that I have right now to really sure. be able to, to practice. And it's great. Um, the camera, it was really easy. It's basically, it's, it's wire, wireless. You could do it wired, but it's just my iPad. Yeah. Uh, I also have two cameras. Sometimes I have my iPhone iPhone, an old iPhone, just connected using IV Cam, and it's free. And when I hit a shot, any any time I hit a shot, it just kind of registers that I've hit the shot. Mm -hmm. and you can take a look at your, your swing, and as you mentioned, draw lines. There you go. Yeah, it's very very easy to use. So now you talked about a little bit about how much you're in here now, uh, and then talk to me about like when it does get warmer. You still gonna spend some time in here? Do you want to go still? You know, maintain outside if you can, because that's you know you know that's the I guess more consistent feel of playing tournament play, you know, the feeling of hitting the ball off the turf. What do you plan on doing there? Because this is really the first summer coming up now where you've had this available to you. Right. I mean, it's predominantly for the wintertime. Um, the, the heat pump I chose, it's heating and cooling. Um, it's a mini split system. So okay. it does does AC if I, if I need it. I'm sure there'll be some times if I'm getting towards the end of the day, I'm like, I just don't want to go to the course and I've been working and just want to come and putt. So I honestly... I, I know my numbers really well. They, they reflect outside the exact same. So if, sure. I, if there's something I'm working on swing-wise, I can come in and check my, my swing on camera here. But got to remember the game is played outside. Um, so when I'm competing, obviously I'm playing on the golf course. So most of my practice in the summertime mm -hmm. will probably be still be outside. Sure. Yeah. Well, uh, we do have a lot of you know, viewers of the channel that are maybe thinking of this, as I mentioned earlier, trying to install something at their residence where they can work on their game. Might not be this extravagant, for them, but I know that's uh, a strong inkling that a lot of golfers have. So uh, would you have maybe some words of advice or recommendations for those golfers out there that might be trying to build something like this for themselves? Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of research that goes into it, like with, with regards to space, like with, with me being limited to 12 and a half feet, I have to be slightly off center when it comes to driver. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll have to actually hit from, say, here, as opposed to the center okay. of the screen. Otherwise, I might hit the wall with right. the club. So 12 and a half is, is pushing it. It's a space that I had. Unfortunately, I couldn't go any wider, otherwise I couldn't do this. Right. Um, so that's the other piece. Ceiling height is, a, is another one. So I'm at 12 feet high. You've got to probably, uh, say, 9 or 10 feet ceiling height at minimum. Projector placement is another one. And I'm still trying to figure out. Right, this. you got like, it right up there. It's right there. Um, now. It, I've never hit it when I've had friends over. They've never hit it um, with a driver, but it looks sometimes pretty close. So I'm actually going to have someone come over to work with me on trying to figure out so I don't have to have it here, going from a short throw to maybe a little more me a medium throw, somehow get it back in this, this spot yeah. here. So my it's just concern, not a concern at all. Yeah. Yeah. It's not a, so it's not a concern at all. Mm -hmm. So you just don't have to you take that element out of play. Now this is eight and a half feet high, that is the projector. So unless yeah. you have a very, very vertical swing, right, which right. let's face it, some people do. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I, I'm in here swinging all the time. I'm like, how do you even come close to that? <laughs> but yeah, so I, I get that. So I'll probably projector placement is, is, is key. Um, I'm gonna play around with that a little bit more. I do have a ceiling fan up here that's about 10 and a half feet high. So it's in, in the way a little bit. Um, unfortunately, 
I didn't want the ceiling fan, but when I had the electrician come out, they recommended it just when I am using it for AC so the sure. air can circulate. Well, I mean, I, I know I would imagine there's a lot of things that also come up that you maybe didn't expect that um, you had to think about or had to yep. worry about. So, but it's a big project. And for you and someone that takes golf as seriously as you do, it's a huge part of your career right now. Right. Uh, and, you know, you want to make it more than that. You want to make it your entire career, too. So uh, having something like this available is probably uh, a big boost to now, you know, in these winter months you got now February, March, probably some of April, as we know, where you'll be needing a spot like this to get ready for your season. And, of course, the big event, the Club Pro Championship in April, uh, you'll have to get your game ready because you won't be able to do that outside much here in Minnesota. Right. February and March, I'm going to be spending a lot of evenings in here dialing in the stuff that I've worked on with Larry, dialing mm -hmm. the stuff that I've worked on with my, with my coach, uh, John Maines, and just really getting myself as close as I possibly can to be ready to go outside once I can get outside. Hopefully, it's by the end of the March where we can actually play outside right. here in Minnesota. Unless I might have to take a little trip down south or something like <laughs> before. Because I don't want to obviously show up middle of April and not have the hit shots of grass for, for five months. Mm -hmm. But for sure. um, it's, it's as, as good as it's going to get. This turf is about as good as it gets also. I know if I catch it heavy, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to reflect on the numbers. Yeah. Or Foresight, GC3, whether it's a quad, whether it's the GC2, they're awesome inside. Um, it's very, very accurate. Trackman also really, really accurate there too. So, I mean, I've done some testing against the two of them. Oh, yeah. they're, they're identical. Yeah. Um, but for me, it was more of a budget thing where I had to go with that right. one for now. Um, well, maybe in the future so you go back to Trackman, depending on how things play out. And I know that's one thing you mentioned is that potential upgrade there. But uh, this is a really cool space. And I look into this is the first time I've been here. It's, uh, it is a, a golfer's you know, heaven in a way. I mean, you get your, especially if you can't go outside and play golf, this is the spot to be. So, uh, you know, last thing I have, Thomas, is good luck because you have a couple months here. If you keep following the, the series here, you know Thomas has probably two and a half months or so here to get ready for that big National Club Pro Championship in Texas in April. And uh, from there, as if you don't know yet, top 20 will advance to the PGA Championship. So I know that's uh, a couple big months here for your game. You'll be in here a lot. Yep. And we're excited to see how things turn out. Yeah, I mean, I have more than just that goal. I have other goals for 2022 and, and, and the beyond. Um, so I'm excited about to put the work in at home.